So today we'll be having a look at how we can unit test a .NET project using XUnit and Mock. So XUnit is an open source unit testing tool for .NET. I think at this point it is very quickly becoming the industry standard tool for testing most modern .NET applications. This can be used in conjunction with Mock. Mock is a package that you can install on your unit testing project that will allow you to mock out any dependencies that your services or modules that you are trying to test might have. This means you can test these services or modules in complete isolation from the rest of your system. So before we look at a more practical example, let's quickly discuss why you should be unit testing. So writing your software while always keeping unit testing in mind will force you to write modular code. And what is meant by this is you can develop your services or modules standalone and you don't have to focus on the entire system while you're writing this one component. And that's called the single responsibility principle. So you will end up with these loosely coupled services or modules that can be exchanged or swapped out or changed without affecting the rest of the system. So you can almost say that the most value obtained from unit testing is not necessarily the unit test themselves, but more writing testable code. In the long run, this will dramatically improve the quality of your code. So as an example, let's take a look at this diagram of a login service that we will be testing in this video. So as you can see here, we have a couple of concrete implementations as well as some interfaces or dependencies. So our login service is dependent on the secure storage module as well as this web client. And it's very important to note that it's dependent on the interfaces to a web client and the interface to the storage module and not the concrete implementations themselves. So what this means is we can unit test our login service completely standalone from the rest of the system. So let's say in future a requirement changes and the implementation of our secure storage module changes. So then we can go ahead and remove that secure storage implementation. We can replace it with a new one. And then as we can see, it had no impact on the rest of the system whatsoever. So let's quickly have a look at what this service does. So the first thing we notice is it's got two dependencies. It's dependent on a web client as well as a secure storage module or service. So this service consists of two methods. So we've got a login method and we've got an auto login method. So very briefly, what this service does is a user would enter an email and a password. This would get sent up to a web client and the server would return a token. So we would return a status code, a session token and an expiry date for this token. So if for whatever reason the server is not available, we would return a response of server not available. So if the server returns an OK, we will attempt to store this user's token into a secure storage module. So this could be any platform dependent secure storage container. We will store the email, the expiry date, as well as the session token. If the user's details are stored correctly, we will return a success. The next method will attempt to auto log in the user. So basically what this does is we won't force the user to log in every time. So if the session token is still valid, we will allow them to log in without having to enter their details again. So we will attempt to get the login details. We will ensure it's not null. And then we will make sure that the session token is still valid. And then we will let the user log in. So let's get into how we will actually go about unit testing this service. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a new project. And then we need to select a X unit test project. And for purposes of this video, we will just call it login service tests or whatever you would like to call it. So to configure this project, there's two things we need to do. We need to install the mock package, which will allow us to mock out our dependencies. And then also we'll need to add a reference to our login service project from the unit test project. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we will add our 
mock NuGet package. Once that has added successfully, we can rename this to login service tests. And this is where we will write our unit tests for this service. So now the first thing we would need to do is we would need to scaffold the structure of our unit test. So typically this is done with three steps. So we will have a arrange step, we will have a act step, and then we have an assert step. So what this means, arrange means this is the setup that we need. We set up deterministic logic, deterministic responses from our dependencies to execute the method. That happens in the act step. And then the assert step basically is just confirming that the result given out from the act step is what we expect it to be. So the first thing we do is we have a look at the method that we're trying to test and we check for any exit cases. So we see there's an exit case if our email or password is null and there's another exit case when our web client returns service unavailable. So let's go ahead and start with this one. So typically you would want to write a test for every single one of the exit cases. But for purposes of this video, we'll just do an example of the server not available. So what I like doing is I like taking the exit case and use that to name my unit test. So now the first thing we need to do is we need to create an instance of our login service. So the first thing we now notice is we need implementations for our web client as well as our secure storage in order to be able to make an instance of the login service. So we will do this using mock. So we will firstly do our web client. And then we will do our secure storage module. Then we can go ahead and pass these two in. And there we see it's happy and it will let us make an instance of the login service now. So in order to test the server not available, we see that we need this login method to return a response of server unavailable. So to do that, we need to mock the login method. So in order to do this, we will go ahead and say web client mock. We will perform a setup, specify the method that we want to fake. And then here we can see the login method expects an email and a password. So for simplicity, we'll do this with some constants. And then we can go ahead and pass these in. And then we can specify exactly what this method has to return. So by checking the interface, we see that it returns a web login response, but we also have to note that it's an asynchronous method. So we'll need to take that into account. So using mock, we can do that by saying task dot from result, and then we can return the model we'd like to return. So just looking at this response, we have an HTTP status code, a session token, and an expiry date. So we are going to do server unavail service unavailable here. For our session tokens, let's make some more constants. And then for our expiry date, we will say
update time dot now. And there we go. So whenever we pass in these parameters to that method, it will return this object. So now we can go ahead and execute the method that we're trying to test. So let's have a look at that method again. So we see it's also an asynchronous method that returns a login response type. So then we just also need to remember we need to add the async modifier to this method to allow us to perform asynchronous method calls. So now we can go ahead and call this method that we're trying to test. And then we pass in the email and password we specified earlier. And then the final step of this test is we would make sure that the response given is the response that we're expecting. So assuming that we're giving it a service unavailable, we would expect this login method to return server not available. So this we would do in our assert step. So the first thing it expects is our expected value. So our expected value is server not available. And then the actual response we got is our login response. So then down here in your test explorer, you can right click on it and you can say run. And as you can see, it passes as expected. So what's also extremely powerful about testing like this with XUnit, let's say we encounter a problem, we can debug all of the logic in this step just by saying debug. So once it debugs, you have all your normal debug operations you can step into. We can have a look at our parameters, that's as expected. So you could see they both were valid. And then here, this login from the web client will return that response that we specified. And there we return our server not available. So then let's do one more example. So looking at our login service, we can test for the final result. So again, typically you would go, go through and test every single one of these exit cases. But for demonstration purposes, let's test a complete success. So then in our unit test project, we can go ahead and set up another test. And we're going to call it the success test. So we can copy over some of our arrange step over here. We know we are going to need to mock this login method again. We know we will need an action step again. And we know that we would like to assert on a specific exit case again. So just starting from the top, let's have a look at our login method. So we've already mocked out this login. And then we see the next step that we'll need to mock is this set secure login. So all we'll do here is we will say secure storage. We will do another setup specify the method that we want to set up. So here we know it takes an email, a token expiry date, as well as a session token. So we've already got these constants. So we will pass the email, the expiry date, and our session token. When it gets those exact parameters, we just expect it to return true. So then we also need to remember to change the setup for our mock client, for our web mock web client. So instead of returning a service unavailable, we needed to return okay. 
and then also in our assertion step we expect this to succeed now so just running a debug on this test we can see our parameters we can see our generated login response so now we have status code okay and then we can see when passing this exact email this exact expiry date and this exact session token that the secure storage storage module will return true and there we have our login success as we can see, the unit test passes as expected. So then looking at our logging service, we see that we have one more method that we'll need to unit test, and that's the auto login method. So let's go ahead and set that up. So in order to be able to test this, we see we need to, to mock out the get secure login method. So let's copy some of our initial setup. So now instead of mocking out the set secure login, we are going to mock the get secure login. As we saw, it takes no parameters and it returns a secure login. So we need an email, a token expiry, as well as a session token. So what we would expect from this method is if we pass it an expiry date greater than the current date, that the session is still valid. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add a couple of days to this expiry date. Now we can set up our action. Let's see what the return type is. We are just expecting a bool. And then we can say our login service dot auto login and now we can check that our login was valid so let's go ahead and run that so as we see here our unit test has failed so let's have a look what's wrong. So as we can see, this is our issue right here. So we made a logical error. We need to make sure that the token expiry date is greater than the current date. So now having fixed that, we expect all of our tests to pass without issue. And there we go.